Hello everyone, this is CJ Novo 992 and today we're back for another brand new video and I don't know about you people but I've needed this type of video, that's right because not only are we here to sit here with a smile and talk about a win and talk about three points but we're actually here to talk about a fantastic performance both on and off the park as Michael Beal backs his words, backs his decisions and backs the people who's actually going to be here next season and they were rewarded us with a truly fantastic performance as me sitting here saying... Can we play in Edinburgh every week? Like, genuinely, can we look into that? Because just like our last trip to Edinburgh, people, we came, we saw, we pulled some scants doing because that performance was excellent from both individuals and obviously as a team, the way we hunted them packs, the way we went about our business, some of the players are just shining right now and it leads me right to my first guy that I want to talk about right away because he's off, often overlooked when he does something well but he's quick to get blamed when things, then he go, Ryan Jack, you look up Ryan Jack masterclass in the old dictionary, you'll see that 90 79 minutes that he actually played versus Hibs right there because he was involved in everything people just winning everything back retrieving every 50-50 retrieving every counter attack I heard me sitting here saying this man could probably go out there and retrieve my missing bag for Edinburgh Airport yes I'm gonna let it go but I'm over it no people but that's the level that Jacko actually put in he was spectacular in the middle of the park and he was met with Raskin and Cantwell who again continue to build their midfield free partnership and for me that shouldn't be touched now for the end of the season if they can go they go people because it's so well balanced there's the strength in there we won 50 50s but then we've got the skill and the technique to go forward it's everything we've been crying out for for a midfield in a very long time and now we're actually getting to see it because make no mistake about it people this wasn't a gimme this wasn't an easy game Hibs came into this game versus Rangers hosting us unbeaten in the last seven winning five of those seven and being statistically the third best team in the country form wise over that period it was an impressive game we weren't against reserved or backups or anything like that no that was a team they went out to spoil Rangers' party and despite looking like they maybe could have for the opening five minutes where Rangers just went hello Giovanni Van Bronckhorst set peace defending thank you for coming merci beaucoup apart from that weird moment it was none they never gave any and they never laid a finger on Rangers and that's not because they didn't perform well or they didn't turn up no they gave it everything they got Rangers were what they should be head and shoulders above them. And speaking of head and shoulders people, let's talk about someone with maybe the greatest hair in Scottish football because I've never seen it move people. It is none other than Antonio Golak or Antonio Cholak or as I like to call him Tony. Two goals people because everyone we spoke about in yesterday's video, I've seen a lot on social media and that with people being surprised but Morelos no starting this game because it suits Morelos but if you watched yesterday's preview video, if you're one of the legends who watched it, you would have found out, you would have known that Cholak was going ahead and start this game. Sorry for the spoiler alert, people, but this is your number nine. This is a guy who's all in. This is a guy who is performing, and as Michael Beale said before the game, it's his shot to lose. And do you think even an ounce of that performance deserved to lose a shot? No, you're looking at the guy who's going to lead us until the end of the season and possibly gone in the future, depending, of course, what we do in the summer. And... Obviously, I speak a lot and I get a lot of flack for liking this lad and speaking this lad the up. I mean, I even got it for the Kamarnock game. Oh, it's just Kamarnock at home. That's the type of game he should be playing in. We need Morelos for Easter Road. We need Morelos for us. We need to get away for that thinking, people. He's not half as good as we think he is. It's unfortunate. Sometimes he was. Maybe one out of every ten game he is that guy, but he hasn't been that guy for a long time. We need to let go of that and look at what's actually ahead of us and what we've got is an actual number nine people who puts the ball regularly in the back of the net yes it looked a little bit rough after he came back for his injury but that's just finding feet that's just finding minutes now we've seen him start back to back games would you drop him going forward no it just looks like he can do everything and for a boy who's been slaughtered for pillar a post when he was coming back for his injury but not being able to link up play he was involved in everything positive going forward with Rangers tonight and again his nickname is 22 goals <laughs> but again the big man probably should have had a hat trick tonight but it's one of these occasions you look at him there's nothing more consistent apart from Sakala scoring offside goals by the way than Antonio Cholak gone out there and getting subbed off on two goals and the only explanation for me and the only way I can understand it is Castor must be publishing a 22 goals range people because it's the only thing that makes sense I feel bad for a laddie but in terms of performance he was spectacular and I 
I'm looking forward to seeing him continue that reign of form. And I actually just want to dive right into the actual game recap here, people, because we didn't just play a number nine in this game. We changed the formation coming in this game to play more of a 4-1-2-1-2 formation. Now, I'm not going to bog down with the numbers and stats and all this stuff because it's a little bit boring, but you'll know exactly what I mean by that. You had Cholak, you had Sakala, and you had Ka Kent, sorry, and I was about to say Kentwell again, people, but Kent in there, and then you had Raskin and Ka Cantwell. <laughs> I don't know why I can't say it being the legs and then you had Jacko just intercepting absolutely everything it was like that pad and pong people he was just bouncing everything back to Rangers for the first whistle to he was substituted off and that tactical change had this hip side gone absolutely crazy and being exposed all over the park it was brilliant to see that and I would like to see that gone again because to me it reminds me very much of towards the end of the 55 undefeated season if you will remember when Kent started playing centrally done that versus Celtic in the 4-1 game and we've seen that through the rest of the season and we had Defoe and everything running about that playing it was exactly like that people so for me I would like to see this formation played again because Hibs just couldn't deal with having two strikers to worry about who would have fought it but two strikers is better to one and actually creates overload and that gave space to Barisic and Tavernier. Honestly, I'm probably just being annoying right now, but it was such a good performance and such an encouraging performance going forward that again, and Michael Beale's short reign as Rangers manager, we're moving in the right direction. But as I'm happy and as I am joyful right now, let's talk about something that made me the exact opposite. <laughs> then shall we just to keep me even peel. And that was the start of this game because despite, again, picking the exact same selections as played versus Kamanic, again, it's their shots now to lose. It was Hearts that started off very, very brightly, obviously with the emotional start of the game and everything like that. They came out firing and they created one opportunity where they got in behind the Rangers defence hit it out and they ended up rolling it wide but they were offering some things people we hit them with a counter attack where Sakala probably should do better from Barisic's wonderful delivery but they stepped up with a free kick and it's just badly defended man honestly it was giving me flashbacks to earlier on in the summer remember when we had lost count how many set piece goals we just threw away and gave to the opposition it was like that again people and this time unfortunately I'm pretty sure again I've not seen it too many times but I think it's wee Nico that ends up losing his man at the back post here and I think Jacko tries to cover for him come out but it's a ball whipped to the back post the guy's on his end he's got a tap in and Connor Golson makes it two goals in two games it's just unfortunate it's an all or net it was brutal it was painful but thankfully it didn't affect this Rangers side as we go back on the ball and started to look as dangerous as we did in the opening five and that's because again such an attacking formation. Sakala, you probably hear a lot of in today's video. He was involved in everything. Some good, some bad, some great people. But that's what you get from him. He gave us absolutely everything. And again, he was heavily involved in this. As Jacko uh, wins a 50-50. And it'll be the only time you hear that. Sakala picks the ball up from the halfway line. Runs in between a couple of Hibs players. Gallops forward. Plays it into Kent down the left-hand side. Kent actually takes a first touch. I think he's going to hit it with his left foot, similar to what he'd done in the last game versus Celtic, but ends up taking a heavy touch, and that heavy touch brings the defender in, and Kent shows his intelligence, shows his balance as he just flicks it back in, just cuts down a wee Ryan Kent shimmy, if you will, and the defender ends up coming, wiping his standing foot, stone cold penalty, even the biggest moon howler, can't complain at that. Oh wait, no, they are. They are. Yep. Rangers shouldn't be getting stone cold penalties when the white players. Oh well. I don't know what the referee was actually thinking not to give this. Stevie Wonder could have seen he wiped his standing foot, but eventually it went over to VAR and it was given after a lengthy look at it as well. Again, a little bit clueless on the referee. But upsets Tavernier versus David Marshall, who's made a bit of a name for himself during his career for saving penalty kicks and to be giving full credit to Tavernier. It's just an unbelievable penalty kick. It hits the side net and David Marshall very good again at saving penalty penalties dives the right way, he actually dives pretty early, but it's just a wonderful penalty kick from Tavernier, who's now scored his 978th penalty of the season, didn't he fact check that, just believe it, at face value and complain and spread the anger about Tavernier's penalty stats, because that's what I see on Twitter 
all of the time. Now to be fair to every single person who's watching today's video because of how late this video is going to be uploaded and to try and save some time, I can't sit here and break down all the dominating pieces of play in the opening 25-30 minutes of this game or we'll be here all night. So I'm having to jump over Cholak setting up Ryan Kent who ended up rolling it wide. Cholak linking up very well with Sakala, again playing it in who should probably do a lot better. I need to skip over Connor Golton's Tom Brady-esque drop right to our boy Ryan Ken, who was 1v1 with the goalkeeper, but he ends up getting slide tackled brilliantly for the Hibs player. Then I like saying that, but sometimes you hold that and hold your hands up and say, great. Defending and then Cholak ended up hitting one over the bar after some good link up play. Again, a nice wee back heel into Sakala. Sakala picks him out, but it ends up hitting it over, and you're sitting saying to yourself, oh, here we go. I've seen this before, and if there was ever an epitome of that feeling, it was 34 minute on the clock. Cholak combines well with Cantwell going down the right hand side. Cantwell plays it to Tav in behind. Cantwell, with the outside of his fit, plays it to the back post. Barisic must be, what, seven, eight yards out? He volleys it. He just rips a volley. Somehow, some way, David Marshall makes a ridiculous wonder save that no one remembers. But when you look at it and you end up seeing it on Twitter when this lad hangs up the gloves, you look at it and say, how did he save that? That's right, in that tone. I'll do it again for you. How? How did he do that, people? But aye, simply incredible bit of defender, a goalkeeping, sorry. When I saw it, I went... Oh, no, no. But thankfully, we've got a number nine, people, with a bit of magic in front of goal that can take a ball and be in the right position and sprinkle in some out-and-out -out number nine magic. And that's what we saw a couple of minutes later. And give full credit to Sakala here again. He was just running. You'll never see him like this or you see him like this, people. But he's gone all the time. And this time he gets the right end of the product as he gets down the left-hand side after Nico Raskin wins a 50-50. Oh, we've got midfielders who win challenges. It's beautiful. He wins it. Kent plays it down to Sakala. Sakala puts it in an area and a number nine shows why he's got the number nine on his shirt as he just sorts his feet. Beautiful death finish. We're 2-1 at Easter Road. Difficult place. A place that people said, oh, you can't play him there. You can play him at Haim versus Killer. You can play him in this game. You can't play him at the likes of Easter Road. Nonsense. Good players will play better with better players people and now you've got a Cholak in the start and living with the talent that's around him right there he can be a difference maker and guess what a striker's supposed to score your goals what does the guy do he scores goals but for the people that's very critical of Cholak and says that's all he does even though how's that a dig is that not what you're supposed to do as a number nine but I'll let it go people for the ins who's not been impressed with his link up player clearly in the nil so far but if you want to talk about industry and doing a wee bit after the ball the ball actually drops outside our box after Hibs try to play a hell of a lot of people forward and Cholak makes a beeline does a wonderful slide challenge kind of block in there gets the ball back Jacko again ends up intercepting a ball if it bounces after Kent tries to get a touch and I don't know how many interceptions this man made in this game but it was absolutely incredible for Ryan Jack the night but anyway he ends up getting his heat up after winning the ball back for us and um, Jacko drives forward he plays Sakala in behind the Hibs defence he's just galloping 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 and gallop and gallop and gallop and gallop and it right at the actual park. I don't know how he'd done it, but he'd done it. And that's the Maverick that is Sakala. And we ended the first half a game with Cholak peeling out wide, whipping in a cross that gets headed out to Tavernier who tries a volley and it's just over the bar. It was breathless, it was exciting, it was everything we want to see for this Ranger side. The only thing, the only worry I had, people, is one, it was only 2-1 because Kent and Sakala should be scoring a lot more goals here. And if we're being quite critical to Cholak, that one where he hit over the bar when he's about just at the edge of the box, you're probably expecting a little bit more for the laddie because of the standard he set. There's chances there to be 4-5-1 up at half time. And then for what we've seen at people, again, we've, we've been taught to worry going into the second half because when we play this well, there's usually a drop off because again, what was done in pre-season or what wasn't done with the lack of legs these players actually have and everything like that. But the best thing you could say about this Rangers team tonight is we just started the second half the way we ended the first half on the front foot. And I'm no exaggerating, I'm no joking here, but Jack genuinely makes six interceptions in the space of 47. He even intercepts his own pass. Do you understand what I've just said? 
goes, ah, then he. Honestly, if I praise this man anymore, he's going to have to block me because it's getting weird and I can feel it. But it was simply incredible the night. And before we talk about the moment that makes it 3 1, Sakala again showing his great pace after Raskin breaks up the play, plays him down the left hand side after a nice little dummy for Ryan Kent. Sakala has to actually play uh, Cholak in here, but he ends up missing and miss hitting the actual ball. But at least the fact that he's gone for it, people, is enough. For me, mere practice, they hangs will actually come off. Nay mere greedy shots, nay mere ignoring wide open. The fact he's went for it is enough for actual me. And we get Arju coming in to the start of the second half because it was Oz, it was all pressing, it was chasing everyone doing the work rate, the energy, the likes of Cantwell, who were barely mentioned, just phenomenal, matching every bit of what Jacko gave and what Can eh, Raskin gave, sorry, he gave in the other side of the park as well. Linking very well with Tavernier, I thought, throughout the entire game. But we end up piling pressure. Again, we're hunting in packs. Marshall tries to hit a kick, but again, he's absolutely useless with his feet, and he always has been. It falls to Jacko. Big boy interception with the heater. Puts it into an area. And when I tell you Fashion Sakala done this... Look at me, I'm even hitting the table. I'm hit, I don't know what I've just hit there, but it's there. He done this, people, for like four minutes. Oh, no, I'm dizzy. And then... He ended up scoring it. I've actually had to do a cut here, people, because I genuinely feel sick, but I'm getting on. Where he basically done a 360 no-scope. If you know, you know. It was an incredible finish for Sakala, and it was one of the ends like, is he offside? Because he only ever finishes like this when he's offside, but of course, that was the gum. Now, the game, they say, and the match was actually won just four or five minutes later with a spelly possession and spelly football at the highest level that honestly just has you sitting back going, why can we not do this all the time? All right. Why have we not been playing that same team all of the time? Because the way we, we, we build up the play is great, but then Kent just showing all his magic. I know he frustrates people, and people are blaming him for the club no offer him a new contract, which is weird, because they were doing that with Golden as well. Now they're trying to paint it like Kent. Doesn't he want to sign a deal? No, if you want to sign a contract, you've got to be offered one first. But he was brilliant here and so involved in this goal. Then it goes to Sakal, who also shows some nice feet. But the ball's bouncing in the box. There's three or four Hibs players between Ken and Sakala. The way they work this is fen phenomenal. They get it out to Cholak, and Cholak does what a number nine supposed to be. No outside Lotran, no being outside there or in the channel here. No, he's inside the area, and he's first to react as he hits a shot. Yes, it deflects into the back of net, but you make your own luck. And football being at the right place at the right time. Not well and truly was game set and match. Now, if you miss the game or any flat and you see this is obviously the last goal in the game, you think to yourself, maybe the game dropped out, maybe the effort, maybe the quality started to dry out and we started to see the game out. But honestly, see if uh, the moment we made it four to the substitutions were made, see the standard the football was was absolutely disgusting people genuinely the standard that we played at the night was un unbelievable and the build up there was a spell where we had the ball for over a minute and a half we made about 40 50 passes and there was mere olays in that build up that nearly resulted in a goal by the way than there was in a 2002 world cup advert if you remember them it was unfortunate but Barisic ended up dragging it wide because honestly see if that had went in like that you'd have had to pick me up for the sales of more because i'd have been streeting in the streets and someday would have complained. But the Cholak-Kent partnership had a couple more moments just before they were substituted off. One where he back heels it into Kent's path who just can't eh, sort his feet unfortunately. At the end I think he was blown a little bit there if I'm honest and then less than a minute later Kent sets Cholak up this time with a great ball into the mixer that Cholak probably should have done better although the defender does block it for going in so again it's one of those six and a half a dozen whatever the old saying actually is and then the substitutions happen and again the players who's coming on the likes of Hadji, they need these minutes and everything like that. Arfield comes on, Morelos comes on, Scott Arfield, and Eb Scott Arfield, I've said Arfield already, but I just like him, all right, despite what some of you may think, and Scott Wright comes on. And to be fair, Scott Wright showed a couple wee moments and everything like that. He gets in behind the defence, he sets up Morelos, who's got Scott Arfield sitting here begging for the ball to make it five, but Morelos shoots when there's three defenders in front of him. It's just the way it's always been, people. It's been a problem in our team for a very, very long time and everything like that but I'm thankful that we're nearing the end of all that again it is becoming a more team oriented side and I think you can see that if you watch the large majority of this game and you've seen Parts versus obviously Kamarnak but that was it ladies and gentlemen boys and girls there was no other big moments or anything I'm going to end the video right there by just saying I'm sitting here absolutely buzzing, buzzing sorry, and happy 
about what I just said. Man of the match, again, it could be anyone. And listen, I've even mentioned even the Goldson and Davies. I thought Goldson was brilliant in this game and that as well. I thought Tavernier had his best overall performance for a very long time. Not even just the goal, by the way, but I thought defending was spot on the way he was getting under in some of these crosses. And I thought Barisic was great as well. He continues his great form that he's had since obviously coming back for the World Cup. Again, Sakala probably owes him a couple of assists in this game right here. And he could be sitting here with ridiculous numbers, but he'd done everything he was needed to do. And I I actually felt the mere narrow formation with the two strikers and Kent in there and the midfield pressing and trying to create things allowed the real best out of Tavani and that because they're no longer running in to the actual winger. There was space there and both of them were excellent and everything like that. So it's a tough one to actually look at if you're looking at Man of the Matches. It'll be interesting if you are still watching, by the way, to let me know down in the comment section below because, I mean, for the second consecutive week and second consecutive game, Tavani and Golden scored in the same match. People, but I could be anyone, but for me, and I'm not being biased or anything like it has to be Ryan Jack. I just thought he was absolutely everywhere, and he probably quiet and doing a lot of BS, unwarranted shouts that's actually been out there about that laddie. When he's on that park, he's frightening and he gives us something we have no go. And he showed that again today. So, Jacko's my man in match. What about you? Let me know your thoughts and opinions down there in the comment section below. And I am going to go and try and get this up before one o'clock in the morning. So, hopefully, see you then or whenever you're watching the video. And again, thank you so much for all your support. If you don't mind hitting that like button or subscribing to the channel, we're trying to chase down 60k. So, any help would be greatly appreciated. And also, I need to shout out Amy McLaren as well. We ended up playing a game on FIFA. I know our nephew's a massive, massive subscriber and big fan of the channel and everything like that. So that was a fun, funny little experience. And that's so a shout out to the little man. Hopefully enjoyed that result tonight. And as always, I've been CJ92. Thank you so much for watching and bye.